Hi guys, the objective of this video is to summarize how we classify sedimentary rocks. We will be using all of the terms we defined in the video just prior to this one. So if you haven't watched the video just before this one, I'd maybe suggest you go and watch it now. So when we first try to classify sedimentary rock, we first look at the average grain size. And we look at how much of the rock is made up of each different type of grain size. The largest type being gravel, where the grain is larger than 2 millimetres in diameter. If more than 50% of the rock is made up of this gravel sized grains, then we would call it a conglomerate. If more than 50% of the grains are around the size of sand, where we can just see them with the naked eye, we would say that the rock is a sandstone. If more than 50% of the rock is made up of grains that we can't actually really see very well, then we would call it a mudstone or shale. Now, once we've decided that a rock is either a mudstone or a shale, there's not much more we can really say about it because the grains are too small to see. However, for a sandstone, we can have a look at whether it is framework supported or matrix supported. If a sandstone is matrix supported, we call it wacky, which means that it has about more than 15% of mud acting as a matrix within the sandstone. If the sandstone is mainly made up of grains of sand without much mud acting as its matrix, we would call this sandstone framework supported, and that's called arenite. So the next thing we look at when we're considering sandstone is to look at the class composition. A lithic sandstone is a sandstone which is made up of mainly lithic part particles. Lithic means that the particles can be any sort of weathered rock, whether that be igneous, metamorphic or sedimentary. A quartz sandstone is quite specific, however, as a quartz sandstone describes a sandstone where the particles are all made up of quartz. These are the two main types of sandstone you will see. Now, if we're looking at a conglomerate, Another way to classify a conglomerate further is to look at the shape of its grains. A conglomerate with angular grains is actually called a breccia. It is still a conglomerate technically, but we use the word breccia to describe it. A conglomerate with rounded grains is still called a conglomerate. Then, like we did for the sandstone, we can look at the supporting matrix of the conglomerate to classify it further. A conglomerate which is matrix supported is called a paraconglomerate and a conglomerate that is framework supported, so where the clasts sit on top of each other and are all touching, is called an orthoconglomerate. The next thing we look at when we consider all sedimentary rock is the degree of sorting that has occurred. If we have a mudstone that contains quite a lot of pebbles within its mix, we would call it a pebbly mudstone or a pebbly shale. If we have a mudstone that has quite a lot of sand, we would call it a sandy mudstone or a sandy shale. A sandstone with mud, we would call a wacky. And a sandstone with pebbles would be called a pebbly sandstone. When we're talking about a conglomerate, which has mostly gravel sized particles, the mud and sand that is added just tell us what type of matrix is gluing the gravel clasts together. These are the terms we use when we're talking about sedimentary rock which is poorly sorted. But what if it is well sorted? Well sorted sedimentary rock doesn't need any of this additional descriptors as we would just have mudstone, shale or sandstone. Finally, when we're talking about sedimentary rock, we talk about the strength of the cement. If the cement strength is quite low and the rock is able to break apart in our hands, we call it a friable sedimentary rock. Whereas if it is a very strong sedimentary rock that does not break apart in our hands, we would call this rock indurated. I know that in this flowchart here, I've left out siltstone. Often when we're trying to classify sedimentary rock by just looking at it, siltstone will often look very similar to mudstone. 
This is because the grains are so small that we can't really distinguish between the two different grain sizes that classify the rock as either a silt stone or a mudstone or shale. Therefore, whenever we're in the lab and we're trying to classify different types of rock, we normally just classify them into mudstone, sandstone and conglomerate. So now using this flowchart, you should be able to classify any sort of sedimentary rock that you see.